I'm Greg Tepper. That's Greg Powers. And this is This Week in Cruton. It's Greg Powers, Next Level Athlete, for This Week in Recruiting. Follow him on Twitter at GPowerScout. Follow Next Level Athlete on Twitter at NextLevelD1. And, of course, see his fine work at TexasFootball.com slash recruiting. This is brought to you by our friends, our chicken friends at Chicken Express. Our delicious uh, – I said this last week, our delicious friends. They're not the, – the product they make is delicious. <laughs> They themselves, I'm sure, are wonderful, but I would not describe them as delicious. Powers, how are you? Great. Uh, it's a little, been a little bit rainy this week, a little bit Funny. dreary, but just gives Weird. us a little bit more time to dive into the video of all these top prospects in Texas. Recruiting is, I mean, across the country has been slowed in some states, but not in Texas. I mean, it's been crazy the amount of prospects that are like coming out of the woodwork and – uh, 2021 is starting to pick back up again, and we're playing a lot of high school football games here, so the kids are getting a chance to show out on film, so it's been kind of fun. Can I can I issue a take that I don't have any data to back up? Okay, okay. let's hear it. I think that because you can now stream Friday night games, that there is a little bit of an increase in exposure for some of these some of these players. That is my official take. I don't disagree. I don't disagree with that. One thing that I noticed, um, and we can we'll get into this as we go through the notebook. Um, I mean the the talent in Texas just gets better and better every year, and I think because of the pandemic, mm -hmm. and there are other states that don't play as many football games, don't have the opportunity to coach their players, uh, the amount of time that we do here in Texas, that it's kind of separating itself out from maybe some of the other states across the country who do have great football talent. Um, but up and down the list, you know, the top 300 list that we're compiling right now uh, for the DCTF Rising magazine that will be out in December, it's going to have some names that aren't in it mm -hmm. that are going to be surprising. Like, that's how stacked of a year it is in 2021. And even more players are uh, coming, out of, coming out of the woodwork every week, and we'll get to one right here right off the bat, I think, with our recruiting notebook. It is uh, a lot to get to uh, here in the recruiting world. We're going to start – with our prospect on the rise, our prospect on the rise, let's go to the Brazos Valley to Brian Rutter, where 2021 wide receiver Keith Ron Lee, um, is, he, he was committed at one point to UTSA. He's now decommitted from UTSA. And since then, he's picked up a couple of big offers, most notably, in my opinion, pretty big in-state Power 5 offer in TCU. Uh, and this was a guy who has been showing out uh, early in the season there, Keith Ron Lee. This is one of those guys where you can just like – Shut up and watch the highlight tape. I mean, yeah. from 2021, it's it's really remarkable. I mean, this guy um, is one of those prospects who will probably line up in the slot in college, but is a true mismatch nightmare because of his athleticism. And it doesn't take long right there on that highlight tape to see that, uh, him being able to climb the ladder, high point the football. He runs great routes, is able to get separation. So it's no surprise that his list is starting to – uh, take off since he made that decommitment from UTSA back in September. SMU is another program I think to watch. I think he would really fit in well with that offense there for the Mustangs and give them a playmaker who can kind of line up all over the field and do some different things. Um, you know, Pittsburgh, Colorado State, Louisiana Tech, ULM, and, and many more have also offered him. And he had a six touchdown game where he collected 13 receptions and 351 yards this year uh keith ron lee here's to you being on the rise and he's one of those guys that we're watching very closely for dctf hot 100 honors as we evaluate prospects in this class well and, and that's a, a perfect example of i think a guy who probably started off the, the off the radar in part because look i mean i don't mean to be mean here but like brian rudder is not a necessarily a brand name state power you know, we, we don't necessarily think of Brian Rutter putting out prospects every single year. But here is a guy who, at least early in the season, has been like, no, it doesn't matter, like, where you play. Like, he is a dynamo out there. And a guy who, like, what I really like about it, he's a physical receiver. This is a guy who who is, like, he does not go down at first contact. He's going to fight every single time. And that's, it's very impressive. I, you know, we've had highlights of him on Fox, and I've been like, this is a kid who is just a, a superstar. That's why I kind of hate to use the term slot, you know, because when you say slot, some people think, oh, well, he's minuscule or he's not – um, very physical. That's not the truth with Keith Ron Lee. I'm just saying that he's a guy who you put in the slot, and linebackers are going to have a very hard time covering him. He has a speed uh, speed advantage when he's matched up with them, but he also has the physical attributes of an outside receiver. This is definitely one of those 
prospects on the rise by true definition. He's one of those guys that's going to shoot up the charts. Let's now move on to our commit of the week. Our commit of the week, we are going to Central Texas, to Rockdale, where 2021 athlete Cameron Valdez has pulled the trigger. He is heading to Texas Tech, the Red Raiders, hauling another kind of small school star there. And he had offers from all over the place, including SEC, like Ole Miss, other elsewhere in the t- in the, uh, in the the Big 12, like TCU and Oklahoma State. He had an offer from Nebraska in the Big 10. Um a guy who was on our radar it's hard to get no hard to be on our radar at the 3A level sometimes but uh, a guy that like his his talents are so un- unmistakable that it's no surprise that he was racking up offers like this yeah and i think he's going to really fit in that texas tech offense very well he's he, i guess by definition we have him rated as an athlete i think he's like that slot back is the best way to describe it he's a guy who catches the football really well he doesn't have a huge opportunity in that Rockdale offense to catch a lot of passes. He's done some of it this year. Uh, they put him in the backfield. He's their star playmaker, so they like to get him a lot of touches there. Uh, but he's he's a prospect who can make big plays. And one thing that's jumped out to me on his 2020 senior tape is that he's a little bit bigger and stronger uh, than he was as a junior, filled out a little bit more, especially in the lower body, which makes him able to escape tackles, especially at that level, Uh, get out of arm tackles for sure, make big plays, extend plays, and that's going to definitely suit him as he transitions transitions into the Big 12 as he heads into college. Texas Tech got a really good one here. Uh, He's one of those guys who was on everybody's radar really early. Everybody wanted him, and as classes started to fill out, it just happened to be Texas Tech standing on top at the end, and I think that he's got a, a true weapon for Coach Wells there in Lubbock. Uh, very exciting to see a, a 3A kid get an opportunity like that. Cameron Valdez heading to Texas Tech. We're talking this week in recruiting with Greg Powers, Next Level Athlete. Follow him on Twitter at GPower Scout. Follow Next Level Athlete on Twitter at Next Level D1. And, of course, get involved with the show at hashtag TF Today. Let's move on to our Recruit of the Week. Our Recruit of the Week, going off the line, kind of North Texas Denton Braswell, 2021 offensive guard, Eric Cade, who stands 6'6", 320. That's all. Uh, he has named his three finalists, uh, and they are three heavy hitters, Texas, Alabama, and LSU. He's a four-star kid um, and a guy who, look, there's a reason that his final three are Alabama, LSU, and Texas. Uh, he's the number two guard in the state, according to Dave Campbell's Texas football. And, uh, I mean, from a physical perspective, from a skills perspective, seems like he's got it all. It's no wonder that these kind of perennial powers are in the mix for him. Eric Cade is one of those guys where you go to a high school game on a Friday night and you know who he is within two seconds of being there. He passes the eyeball test. When he lines up on the line, he dwarfs other high school players. He's the biggest guy on his team on, a, quite frankly, an offensive line that has some beefiness up front at Denton Braswell, a school that's really going to start to continue to crank out prospects onto the next level. It's, it's a real program on the rise here in the DFW area. And this one's kind of fun for me because a lot of times I'll come on to the show and I'll be like, oh, well, you know, watch out for this school and this player's recruitment or keep an eye on the Longhorns here as they may hold an advantage. Cade is one of those guys who plays his recruitment very close to the vest. And if you log on to some other sites who are in the prediction game, there are no predictions Mm -hmm. out there for Eric Cade, which is really surprising because the three teams that he's considering has some of the best experts that cover college football recruiting in the entire country in Texas, LSU, and Alabama. And when they don't know, uh, that really throws uh, a wrinkle into the plans of predicting where one of these guys might end up. And Eric Cade is uh, going to be a true surprise when he makes his decision. And that's fun for me, and I think it's fun for the fans to have some of these guys where they really don't know where he's going to end up. I kind of put in the notebook to keep an eye on Alabama. They've really been there from the beginning, but it it's just a long shot guess on my yeah, part, I guess. Nobody knows. He's not he's not into uh, you know, he's a quiet kid. Right. So, so nothing wrong with that. You know, we 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 deal with a lot of a lot of players and and look, it's your recruitment, you can handle it however you want, but you have a, a number of players who Every time they get an offer, every time that they, you know, have a big play, every time they do that, like you hear from them. And that's a good thing from our perspective as people who, who you know, report on it. Right. But at the same time, there's also this other side of, of players who like to keep it a little quieter, a little bit low key. And, and, and suddenly you're showing up with uh, a final three of Texas, Alabama and LSU and you know, <laughs> not necessarily surprised. All right. Let's get into let's round it all out with our um, underclassmen of the week. Our underclassmen of the week. We're staying in the DFW Metroplex. We're going to Saxe. To their 2022 quarterback, Alex Orgy, if you recognize that name from East Dallas, 
Uh, you uh, know he is the younger brother of Alston Argy and Anthony Argy, uh, who are both at Vanderbilt. Uh, and this kid is uh, doing big doings there. Last week against Garland, he threw for 267 yards, ran for 120 yards, and he has four touchdowns in that game. Uh, he followed that up uh, by getting an offer from Virginia Tech. He's got offers from all over. Uh, it's another kid from the – they went out back at the, at, the, uh, at, the, at the Orgy family <laughs> tree, and they just picked off another prospect because this kid is, uh, is another star. Yeah, and this was a huge win for Saxe to beat Garland the way that they did. I mean, that was a big game, a big district game. Um, you know, Garland has a ton of talent this year. They have a lot of big-time players on both sides of the football who are getting looked at by colleges. But Saxe has been there year in and year out as a team to beat in that district, and it looks like they're starting to separate themselves from the pack again this year and in large part due to Orgy leading them on the offensive side of the football. This was a big offer for Orgy because it was double digits for him. He climbs to number 10 on the list with a lot of other uh, heavy hitters in there. What I thought was pretty interesting when looking at his list, it's a lot of Power 5 programs that stepped up to offer him first. And Pickle and I were kind of talking about this before the show started. Every Orgy I've ever covered passed the eyeball test when they were like 14 years old. And, you know, because Alston and Anthony were going through the recruiting process, Alex was one that we – we're able to get our eyes on early. He was a big deal back when he was a kid and a young kid before he even started playing for the Rockwall program his ninth grade year when he was a receiver there, um, you know, and, and was a standout receiver for the, for the Rockwall team that was really good that season. And now he's playing quarterback at Saxe, and, and he's one of those guys who could play different roles in an offense. He could probably play wide receiver, but, man, he has a giant arm and the more experience he gets playing within that offense, I think the more colleges are going to like him because of his upside uh, and his arm strength. So he's one who's only going to continue to get better. And I was excited to get a chance to talk about Orgy because he's the third one in that family tree, as you mentioned, that has been a big deal in the state of Texas. So congrats to Alex Orgy for being underclassman of the week. And just uh, just to the latest in a long line of accolades coming his way there, Alex Orgy, the quarterback there for the Saxe Mustangs. He is our quarterback. He's Greg Powers in the next little after. Actually, I don't know. Um, you're like, you can't uh, take it back now. You I said think, it. You already I, said it. I think you're more of like a strong safety. Okay. You know what I mean? So it's like you're leader of the secondary. You're out there barking orders. You're making sure everybody's lined up right. I'm glad uh, you didn't say nose guard or something no. when you when you retracted <laughs> that. But okay, I, I can live with that. I'm the backup left guard. Pickles the quarterback. Uh, Ishmael is. <laughs> what is Ishmael? Ishmael's a center. Okay. You know what? Ishmael's the center. Ishmael's he actually roots everything. Ishmael's <laughs> actually in charge. Yeah. <laughs> but like nobody talks about him. That's the big thing. Anyway, yeah. uh, he's Greg Powers, <laughs> the next level athlete. Follow him on Twitter, G Power Scout. Follow Next Level Athlete on Twitter, Next Level D1. See his fine work at TexasFootball.com slash recruiting. Powers, thanks for your time. Let's do it again next week. See y'all then.